We're so glad you all took the time out of your day to come out here and worship our Lord and Savior uh, in spirit and in truth. I have just a few announcements before we get started this morning. Uh, Walling Springs will be having a, uh, having a singing night this Friday night uh, that will begin at 7 p.m. So if you've got the time, go out and sing some hymns, sing some hymns and support that if you would. Slater Marietta is, is having their gospel meeting starting tonight. It uh, goes through Tuesday. I think tonight starts at 6. Monday and Tuesday will start at 7. So if you have the opportunity, please go out and support that as well. <coughs> Let's not forget Augusta Road. Church of Christ is having their Ladies Day uh, October 8th. So it's from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So if there's a flyer in the, in the foyer. If you... Uh, if you'd like to sign up and register to be a part of that, you're welcome to do that. Also, we'd like to, I don't see any visitors here with us this morning, but if you are visiting with us, we'd like you to know that you're our honored guest and we'd like you to come back just each and every opportunity that you have, that you can be with us. We'd love to have you. We'd like to thank uh, uh, Pam for the, for the October bulletins. Uh, if you don't have a bulletin, you can get you one uh, in the foyer on the table on the left as you leave the auditorium. We have a lot of our uh, members who are out sick, uh, some that are shut in, and some that are traveling. So uh, you gotta be a bulletin, read over it. We've got some birthdays coming up. Make sure you give those folks a call. Tell them happy birthday. Uh, and one more thing, if you're, if you're sitting next on your pew and you're used to seeing somebody sit beside you you haven't seen in a while, uh, feel free to give them a call. Our directory has each and every one of uh, who attends, has their numbers in it and their address. So. Give them a call, send them a card, see how they're doing. Um, it's really about all I have. Oh, we want to remember uh, Sister Vicki. She's home this morning, not feeling well. Um, let's keep her in our prayers as well. Hopefully she can be back with us soon. In this morning's worship service, our song leader will be by Joel Foster. Our scripture reading this morning will be by Vernon Johnson. <coughs> That's where I'll be uh, having our lesson, and our closing prayer will be by uh, Brother Barney Miller. And we'll start our, our service, if you would, if you bow with me, we'll start our uh, worship service with prayer. Almighty God, our Father, who up in heaven, hallowed be thy great and holy name. Dear Lord, what an honor it is to be able to approach your throne this morning on this beautiful Lord's Day. We give thanks for this opportunity we have to gather here with this group of believers to Worship you in spirit and in truth, Father, to sing songs of praises unto thee. Gather around thy table to remember the great sacrifice given to us by Jesus. And to open and hear another portion of your true and divine word. We pray, Father, at this time that the truth will always be taught here in Molden. And we pray, Father, at this time for our brother Dennis and, and Vicky. We pray that they would continue to keep their health and that they would be able to serve 
here at Malden for many years to come. We pray this morning, we pray for Brother Dennis this morning that, that he will have a ready recollection of that lesson that he has, that he has studied, that he has put together and prays that, that he'll be able to deliver it in a way that we will be able to, to understand it, that we will be able to study it our own self and that we'll be able to apply it to our life and, and most importantly, Father, that we may be able to teach others of thy word. We also pray this morning, Father, for Brother Joel, as he, as he leads our song service, we pray that we will all lift our voices up to thee. Pray that our singing will be a sweet savor unto thee. And pray also, Father, this morning for your church here in Malden. We pray for your church the world over. We just pray, Father, for, for all Christians during these times. We know that there's a great fall away, and we just pray that that we would continue to stand up for, for your word, what your word says, and that we would continue to fight against those laws that are trying to be passed that are contrary to your word. We always pray, Father, that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this morning also, Father, for our first responders, our military families, both here and abroad. We pray that you would continue to keep them safe. We pray, Father, at this time for those folks who were in the path of, of Hurricane Ian, we pray that that they would continue to look for you and your word for the comfort that they need during these times. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who have lost everything that they have and have to start over. We just pray, Father, that you would keep them in your fold and that you would, that you would help them through these tough times as only you can. We do pray, Father, this morning also for, for our government. We pray that you would continue to continue to rule in a way that that would that would not hinder the Christian values. We pray, Father, that they would look to your word before they make laws that affect your children. We do pray, Father, that during these, also during these times, that, that we could unite as political parties, that we could help those in need, and that we could put politics aside at this time. And we just pray, Father, that that all will go well in Florida and South Carolina. Dear Lord, as we continue to further exercise this service this morning, we pray that all that is said and done is in accordance to your will and pleasing in your sight. We do pray at this time, Father, that you would forgive us when we fall short of being the children you expect us to be. This prayer we ask this morning is in the loving and strong name of Jesus. Amen. Brother John.
we gather around the table this morning, let's all place our thoughts upon Christ as he hung and died up on that cross for each and every one of us. The song we just sang, you pay attention to the words, that tells us everything before we are around the table for. If you would, turn with me, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you, and this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. We'll now have a prayer for our bread. Let's pray. Dear Father, forgive us for the Lord this Lord God of Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have to take of this fruit and vine, which represents the shed blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we as Christians partake of this in a manner pleasing unto thee. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Amen.
Concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is given back to the Lord as He's blessed each and every one of us with. If you would, I'd like to read a couple of verses. First uh, Corinthians 16 and verse 2 it reads, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. <clears throat> also, Second Corinthians. 9 and verse 7 it reads, Every man according as his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. We'll now how to pray for all. Heavenly Father, we pray that we'll focus our thoughts on all that we have in this life. We know all good things do come from thee. We pray that we're just so thankful for our homes and our, our families and our means of income. We pray that as we do give back, we'll, we'll thank on these things and we pray that we'll be found pleasing as we give. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Five, six, nine. Five, six, nine. Mm -hmm.
I will be reading Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the sephirim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the sephirim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongue from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. In the book, Hurry and Big for Little Reasons, the author tells a story about hearing geese flying over his farm and honking and making a racket. And as he looked up, he saw them flying across the face of the moon. He was amazed at the sight. In the book, he said that it would have ended there, but he noticed the behavior of the tame mallard ducks on his farm's pond. They heard the honking too, and it triggered a long dormant instinct that they too would be flying through the skies. They fluttered their wings. They had the urge to fly, to soar as God had created them, but they knew they couldn't. The question was settled years ago when the corn of the barnyard was more tempting than serving God's purpose. We're going to soon be entering a season when the world will focus on Jesus coming into the world. We are made to think about the purpose of his coming and how that should change our lives. But for many, Jesus remains an account about a little baby in a manger with visits from shepherds and wise men. We are stirred within with the thoughts of God becoming flesh, of dwelling among us for the purpose of forgiveness and salvation. Our desire is to react to his coming. In his amazing grace, we are rekindled. We are prompted to worship and serve him correctly. See, that issue was settled years ago when the temptation of the world and the things of the world were stronger than living daily in the presence of his coming. So we have settled for something less than soaring the heights of godliness, holiness, and spirituality. We have settled for living in the pond of apathy and mediocrity rather than living daily in the presence of God. King Uzziah, he died, and it was crisis time for Israel. It is here that Isaiah consults with God, and he goes to Solomon's temple. This is the context of Isaiah chapter 6. How 
Does God's presence make a difference? He's everywhere. He's all seeing. He's all knowing. In Psalms 139 and verses 7 through 12, David asked the rhetorical questions. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light to you. These thoughts came to David because of what he was thinking those first six verses of that chapter. The Lord, you've searched me. You know me. You know when I sit down. You know when I rise up. You know my thoughts before I think them. You, you know my words before I speak them. My behavior before I act. Friends, we cannot hide our real selves from God. <coughs> When we gather together here to worship, God is in our midst. It is promised to us. God knows our hearts. He knows our motives. God knows what stirs us up. God will know if we are touched by his presence or not. He also knows that when we go home, if we are flying, living daily for his purpose that he created us, or we're just floating around in that pond of life. But we can hold and hide our stirrings from one another, but we can't do it from him. We can even fool ourselves, but we can't fool God. God knows us. We should be struck with the awesomeness of his presence. When God made his presence known to Isaiah, the foundations of the temple shook. Friends, the temple that Solomon built, the foundation was 30 to 40 feet below ground, and it shook. His throne was high and exalted. The seraphim were proclaiming his character, holy, holy, holy. You know, when Jesus showed up walking on the water in the storm on the Sea of Galilee, Mark 6 and verse 50 says that his disciples were terrified. They were afraid. They were amazed. Are we just as awestruck by his presence as they were? Does his presence stir us up? Does it help us with our thoughts and our actions? Or have we become so calloused that we just keep doing what we've always done? Do we keep acting as if he's not even here? So well, there are those who, who come to worship services with nothing but worldly thoughts running through their heads. There are others who come that are awestruck. They're afraid. They're amazed. They're humbled as Isaiah was. If some famous person walked through those doors this morning and sat down, what would our reaction be? You know, it wasn't just a few minutes ago we were gathered around this table taking the Lord's Supper together. Did we understand the awesomeness of his presence? 
did we truly appreciate during this brief moment of time appreciate what was done for us. Were we in any way stirred up inside? God's presence should motivate us to worship and to serve. You know, Isaiah, he fell on his face. He worshiped God that way. When Peter, James, and John were with Jesus at his transfigurations. It was there that they saw his glory. They realized who he really was. In Mark 9 and verse 6, it says that they were terrified. At that point, they wanted to build three tabernacles, one for Jesus, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. <laughs> In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, as John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, he sees a resurrected Jesus. It says there that he fell to his face, to the ground in yielding and worship. How do we react to his presence? Do we humbly submit to his presence, or are we floating in the palm? What about tomorrow? Will it be different than today? <coughs> Will we be soaring today, but tomorrow we're back on the palm? Will we be like Isaiah, like the apostles, like Paul or John? Verse 8 of Isaiah 6 says that the Lord said, Whom shall I send? And, and Isaiah, he said there, Here am I. Send me. <laughs> Will that be our response? There are a lot of things that need to be done in this congregation. There are many ways to serve Will we say, here am I, send me? In Romans 6 and verse 4, Paul, talking to the Jewish Christians there, said, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised to the dead, from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Are we becoming the living sacrifices? Are we offering ourselves in his service? When the opportunity presents itself to serve, will we be stirred to serve? Or will the issues of the world be such that we don't have the time to serve? There are a lot of us in this auditorium this morning remembers the times when we would come home from services, church services, and lunch would have to be cooked if you wanted to eat. There were no restaurants open that you could go to. There was no microwaves to put something in to reheat. Some of us probably even remember when going to church, you either walked or some other way that was less convenient than today. I live 11 miles from here. If I forget my sermon, I can be home and back in 20 minutes. Think about the days when you had to get up at 4 in the morning. So you can have breakfast before you go to church and you hitch up a wagon or you walk to church. And yet today we don't have time. I can get on an app and have somebody shop my groceries for me and even deliver them to the house. I don't have time. I 
can boil water in three minutes in the microwave, but I don't have time. Here am I, send me. When we read Isaiah 6, we cannot help but notice the results of God's presence in Isaiah's life. He was cleansed and he was forgiven. A seraph had taken a piece of hot coal, touched his lips, and told him that his sins had been removed, that he was cleansed. Those people that had gathered around at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, they were told that if by faith and repentance they would submit to New Testament baptism, that two things would happen to them sins would be forgiven they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit God's presence in our lives always brings cleansing 1 John 1 verse 7 reminds us that if we walk in the light as he is in the light that we have fellowship with him and with each other and that the blood of Christ will continue to cleanse us from all sin While the ducks had the urge to fly when they heard the geese, the ease of staying where they were kept them from soaring to heights that had once been there. Will we let that happen to us? Will we allow the presence of God to help us reach new heights? to do what we were created to do. Solomon in Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13 tells us that the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. On my desk in the office, Vicki gave me a plaque that I keep there. I look at it just about every day. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. It's time to get off the pond. It is time to soar and to do the things that God has created us to do. You can begin that this morning by obeying the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Through repentance and confession, being baptized to wash away your sins, you can be added to God's family. And through a faithful life, regardless of whether or not you have fallen, the blood of Christ will continue to cleanse through your repentance. If there's anyone that has a need this morning, whether it's to obey the gospel or to have asked for our prayers, Anybody has a need, won't you come as together we stand and sing? <laughs> Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with me. His power Place 
of constant rest. Would you prove it through each providential test? Would you in his service labor always at your best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see what's best for him to have his way. Good to see everyone that's here this morning. I hope you'll be back this evening at 5 for our evening worship. And also this Wednesday, we'll have our uh, singing night this Wednesday. At this time, we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Please bow. Please bow and pray with us. Almighty God, the Holy Lord, Father in heaven, we're thankful. ask of your people long ago to do justly. To show mercy. And to walk humbly <coughs> For Solomon said, this is the whole duty of man. And your will should always be done in our lives. It is your will and not our own will seek to please you in this life and we're thankful for the gift of eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the giving, forgiving us of our sins and our iniquity and we look forward to that day when my son comes again to take us to be home with thee forever for it's in Jesus most holy name that we give thanks for this Amen. Amen.